Okay. So all the e-phase that comes in is first segregated into glass and non-glass portions. Okay. So let's say non-glass and glass. The non-glass output is put into the automated shredding machine. It's a big shredder. Mm -hmm. The output of the shredder is passed through a magnetic field to suck the iron out. Okay. Yeah. The output, uh, the iron comes out here. The non-ferrous metals go through something called an eddy current separator. What kind of separator? Eddy current. I see. So uh, basically the principle is the density of aluminium, copper and plastic is different. And that's what this particular module utilizes. The output is aluminium, plastic and copper mixed with precious metals. Okay. Yeah. This then goes through a smelter. The output of the smelter is a mixed metal ingot of roughly 10 kgs in weight. This mixed metal ingot goes through the electro refining plant. Where uh, we get the pure gold, silver, copper, lead, tin, nickel, palladium out. Okay. Electro refining plant is a sort of combination of big tanks connected to rectifiers and there are different electrolytes depending on which metal is being extracted. Right. So that's the plant process. The plant is highly automated and it does not require too much manual labor in it. What's the output on a daily basis? Uh, see, right now we are uh, sort of ramping up uh, the production and revenue as we go along. But on a daily basis, we are generating close to 150 grams of gold. Right? We are uh, generating close to uh, what 10 kgs of copper and so on and so forth. Uh, what's the impact that this could have on the India environment? So the uh, impact on the Indian environment is very positive because if we do not recycle electronic waste, then there are two sort of loss to the environment. First is that uh, if you just landfill it, there's a carbon dioxide equivalent emission that happens, right? Each computer, if you landfill, is close to 30 kgs of carbon dioxide equivalent gases you're emitting into the atmosphere. Second is, if you do not extract the precious and base metals out of electronic waste, and you extract a similar amount of metals from virgin mines, then it's much more expensive from an energy perspective. So you're losing the metals if you don't do it and you're causing an environmental harm if you don't do it. So from both these perspectives, it's a very positive thing for the Indian environment. Where is this plant and how big is it? The plant is located in a place called Roorkee, which is roughly 200 kilometers up north from New Delhi, the capital of India. And the plant is around two and a half acres or 10,200 square meters in size. And it's on the river Ganges, right? It's near, the banks, near the banks of the river Ganges. And you started up operation in about? Uh, close to one and a half years back. The company was officially founded in February 2007. Okay. Oh, February 2008, sorry. So close to one and a half, two years back. And raised the first series around from DFK and NEA Indo US Ventures of $6.3 million in May 2008 and started operations after that. And you're looking to raise another round of finance now, right? Correct. We're looking to do a series B financing now. Uh, what's your revenues currently? Our current, uh, we expect to close uh, this year, uh, this financial year with a million dollar plus in revenue. Over the last six months, we've been doubling revenue month on month, mm -hmm. right? And next financial year, we're looking at around 10 plus million dollars. Five years from now, how big will the company be? Uh, five years from now, the company will be close to 100 million dollars in revenue. And when will it be profitable? Oh, so we are, February is the first break even month. I see. So what happens, uh, where do you sell this, uh, these uh, metals that are extracted? So the output metals that come out of the plant are pure metals. We get 99.99% pure gold, we get 99.99% pure silver, electrolytic copper and so on and so forth. All of these are sold in the commodity market at the MCX rate, which is equivalent to the London Metal Exchange rates on a spot basis. So that's how you get your revenue then, That's right? how we make our money. I see. And uh, what's been your capital investment in the company so far? So the capex investment in the company so far has been north of $5 million. Okay. How did you get into this? 
Well, uh, we started out from the fact that this is an environmental issue which we were concerned about and then we researched about it and figured out there's a business case around it as well. That's when we got passionate about it and frankly, very few people in the world have an opportunity to do something socially relevant and make money out of it as well and we believe this is our calling. Is there anything else like this in India now? There's no other company in India who does uh, pre who do precious metal extraction from mm -hmm. electronic waste. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones who have the technology to do it. But there are a couple globally. There's one in yes. Belgium and one in the in the, the U.S. Right? Yeah, there, there are four or five companies globally. I see. So this is leading edge technology from India, then, Correct. right? Correct. Okay, good. And uh, it's interesting that you raise the financing with just a PowerPoint presentation. Just a PowerPoint. So, so that's how passionate you were about this project. Plus, how passionate the investors were about us as well. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It goes both ways. And your background is? I am uh, personally, I did my electrical engineering from IIT Delhi and then have worked as a DSP engineer designing chips for mobile phones in India and US. Then have my, done my MBA from NYU Stern, exchange program at London Business School and come back to India to start this venture. So who developed the technology then? We have a R&D team in place in Ruriki, who we, that's the first thing we established, right? And there's an active contribution that has gone in from my side as well. I see, I see. So the R&D is actually um, partially from your team of research and developers. Yes. And uh, are you affiliated with any university or? Yeah, so we are affiliated with IIT Ruriki. I see. Uh, yeah, because IIT Ruriki has tremendous testing facilities. And as a startup company, we cannot afford to have expensive testing equipment installed at a place, right? And in fact, uh, interestingly, Rebecca, in India, the university and the private partnership is not that great. In Silicon Valley, uh, startup companies engage with Stanford or uh, other universities to do either research or testing and so on and so forth. So we were the first ones to initiate this with IIT Roadkey as well, telling that, that it will help their students get an access to our technology and help us get an access to their testing facility. It's a win-win situation for both. So is it considered a university spin-out? No, no, it's not, not a that close. No, no, no. We're just sort of utilizing their testing facilities because we don't need to spend that much money on installing those equipments. And the university gets some money out of their installed equipments as well. We pay them a monthly fee for using their equipments. Okay, I see. Well, yeah. very interesting business. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks.